Now, let us talk to our good friend, Mr. Nick Freeman, criminal defence lawyer, author, commentator, of course, otherwise known as Mr. Loophole. Um, Nick and I uh, and some other people got involved in trying to get a petition going in Parliament. Um, I guess it was towards the end of last year about e-scooters, about registration and insurance for bicycle riders and, you know, basically to make the roads a fairer place so that everybody knows who everybody else is. Unfortunately, um, the parliamentary types decided it wasn't necessary to discuss. Meanwhile, e-scooters are rampant all over the place now, all over the country. Nick, uh, very good morning to you. Um, morning. We tried um, valiantly. We may yet try again, Nick. Um, but the e-scooter problem just isn't going to go away, is it? No, it's not going to go away. It's, it's growing literally by the day, as the re recent research in California shows. I mean, th this is always going to be a huge problem. And, and the, the main difficulty is there is actually legislation in place. It's similar legislation that exists for cars, but it's redundant because we don't know who's driving at any one time. And, you know, in our petition, we wanted people who bicycle and who use e-scooters to be identifiable either by a tabard, a number plate, some form of identification so that they can't uh, scoot or cycle with impunity. You know, it will be, as I said, I've said many times, you imagine taking a number plate off a car. Imagine how drivers would, would drive if they were no longer going to be held into a, to account. Yeah. And that's what's happening here. So it's a free for all uh, on a design that's inherently dangerous. So we've got, you know, law that doesn't really exist. The government even acknowledged that. They say, look, there is law in place, but it's not really practical to enforce. We haven't got police to police it. Um, the streets are deluged now with, um, a, you know, unlawful um, e-scooters that can go up to 68 miles an hour. They're going all over the place. Yes. And, and it is like the Wild West out there. And the, the injuries, I mean, the, the, the research, in my view, doesn't show anything like the true picture. No. So it's something the government really needs to get hold of. Um, and uh, they're, they're simply not doing so. They're, they're just not, are they? Because, again, it's part of this sort of greening uh, of the world agenda, isn't it? Let's get everybody on a, on a more sort of, you know, fashionable and much more clean form of energy, uh, driving around um, at high speed. But it really is absolutely incredible. What Just as you were speaking there, Nick, we were playing some footage of the way some of these scooter riders operate, and they're all over the place. They're on the pavements, they're behind cars, they're on the side of cars, they switch in between lanes in traffic. Sometimes in cycle lanes sometimes they're not you know and there's no real i mean i think i've mentioned it to you before there doesn't appear to be any specific um instructions for scooter riders in the highway code i don't think they make any mention of scooters do they well now of course with the new highway code they're they're enjoying elevated status because mm. um that they're extremely vulnerable far more vulnerable than cars you know that you've got pedestrian cyclists and then you've got e-scooters yeah um so you know in that in that hierarchy of vulnerability that they're right up there, which means it, it's a, a nightmare for the motorist because you're, you're looking now at something that's approaching you rapidly from the near side, the off side, um, and you've got all manner of other, manner of yeah. other things. Yeah, I mean, you can't break. see them, really. You can't hear them because much un unlike a bicycle, which at least you can generally see in one of your side mirrors, sometimes they're so thin because all it is is literally the, the, the size of one person standing up. That's all you can see, and you can't always see them until it's too late. Yeah, um, they're silent, um, they're stealthy, and the other thing that's fascinating for me is, you know, they are covered by the Road Traffic Act. As I say, that, that legislation is redundant for the reasons I've stated. But, you know, in, in June 2020, the government introduced a statutory instrument to say that it's no longer mandatory for them to wear helmets. Right. So you've got these machines that are inherently dangerous by virtue of a defective design. Uh, and, you know, the government is saying we don't actually require you now to wear helmets as well as not having identification. And it just beggars belief. You know, they, they do have a place in society, um, but we need a proper infrastructure and they need to be confined to that infrastructure. And, and then it would work, you know, cycles, bicycles, uh, e-scooters on a, on a curb protected area. That's where they exist. They can't go anywhere else. They're kept away from traffic. Um, and, and then they do have a place and, you know, that might be a nice way of, of moving about it. It's, it's quick and it's cheap. Um, but you can't mingle them with the rest of traffic and not expect to have catastrophic consequences. And that's what's happening. It's going to happen more and more so. You know, there are no police about who is supposed to regulate this. You know, how, how do you deal with this problem? Um, without proper legislation. Uh, and it's a nightmare. And, you know, the government prioritising the green agenda are, are closing their eyes to huge costs to the national health, 
um, which they need to get a grip of uh, mm. at this very pressing Absolutely. time. Absolutely. We had a guest in a few weeks ago, Nick, I don't know whether you saw, uh, a woman from a, one of the, uh, the blind um, charities who's done a lot of research and she actually goes around checking um, scooters to see what sort of roadworthiness they have. And an awful lot of the, the scooters that she checked, and these are the ones that people hire, which are supposedly yeah. the legal ones, they've got ball tyres, they've got tyres yeah. like coming off the wheel. Um, yeah. She sees and, and videos the way people ride them, which is entirely without any kind of restriction whatsoever. She also showed us a very interesting um, video, which apparently is a TFL video, which she couldn't share with us because she'd had to get it through some kind of um, Freedom of Information Act, where, a spon where one of these scooters actually spontaneously combusts on the tube. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not just the design, it's actually the, the hardware of these yeah. that's working. There's no test. You know, you wouldn't take a car out with bald tyres no. without committing an offence. And as I say, you know, that you, you do, there is a legal requirement that the tyres are a sufficient tread, but, but how do you enforce that? It, it's the same thing. The, the just, and the, there are so many, you can't, you can't enforce the law for that reason and also for the fact you don't know who's driving them. And you're never going to be able to enforce it. The only way this will ever work is if they are forced to go into set safe lanes uh, and then anything else that's outside that is literally seized by members of the public it will be like driving a car on the pavement it just wouldn't happen no. that's the, that's the only way they're going to actually work and of course yeah, the government need to invest a, a substantial amount of money for that to happen and uh, of course um that they and councils aren't flush with cash at the moment. No. I mean, the Metropolitan Police have told us that they have seized quite a lot of these scooters, you know, mm. some hundreds of them. Um, but yeah. clearly, that's not all of them, because you can still go and buy one, even though, technically speaking, it's not illegal to buy and it's not illegal to sell. It's illegal to ride it, except in a private place. But clearly, yeah. that's not being enforced either. No, well, where, wherever you go, whichever city, wherever you go, you know, anywhere, country, town, you see young lads, older people on the pavement, going on the roads, going wherever they want, because, you know, in, in other countries, um, the, the, they, it seems to be a free-for-all. It seems to be, well, I can weave in and out of pedestrians, I can do what I want, and, and that culture is being adopted here, and there, there is that going to be the, the cost to, to public safety to pay for that. Mm. Um, so, so what can we do next, Nick? I'm, I'm not sure a petition is the answer, because I think whatever happens, the, the government eventually, I've, I've said, and I know you have agreed, eventually the government are going to wake up and realise, actually, you know, we want a green agenda, but, but there have to be safety provisions in place. Um, and and the, the latest statistics show that this is now the most dangerous form of transport. So it's desirable, but at the same time, it's the most dangerous. And isn't it an irony? That, you know, you've got a government to actually sneak through a statutory instrument to say you don't need to wear a helmet uh, and, and are quite happy for them to remain on the roads without proper identification. It's staggering. Yeah. So the government need just somebody to say, look, we're going to sort this out. We're going to have law. We're going to have identification. We're going to make it properly regulated. And I'm convinced the moment you have proper regulation, People then behave more responsibly. There's never going to be a perfect system. We have to acknowledge that. There isn't with cars. People commit offences in, in cars all the time. But it's an awful lot better than it would be if you had no registration. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're told, are we not, that right now, certainly in cities, um, people are going to be filmed as they drive. If they are in any way in touch with a telephone, uh, a handset of any kind, uh, they can be fined remotely because the camera will pick that up. Why can we not get cameras to pick up what cyclists do illegally and what scooter riders do illegally. We, we can, but what does that show? It shows a cyclist or an e-scooter doing something illegally. But who is driving? Yes, who, well, exactly. Who, who do you punish? Yeah. And that's why we need this registration system. Mm. And, you know, while, while we're on it, Mike, do, do you not think it would be a good idea to outlaw pedestrians crossing the road whilst on a mobile phone or listening to music? Yeah. Don't, don't we all have a responsibility to pay? We're using limited road space. Our goal is to make our roads safer for all. So, you know, it's very well having a hierarchy of vulnerability, but let everyone play a small part mm. and then the roads will be safer. And you can't, you know, at the moment you have pedestrians who are, According to the Highway Code, they can step off the pavement in front of a car. They can be on their phone listening to music, and it's the driver's responsibility. It, it's a complete joke. Yeah. So, you know, there, there is a lack of expertise, I'm afraid, 
in, in the legislating making process and that needs to change and until it changes that it, it's not going to happen it's going to get considerably worse yes. and considerably more dangerous yes you're absolutely right nick good to talk to you again thank you very much indeed nick freeman there uh, mr loophole talking about the dangers uh, of scooter riding not just for those on the scooters but for those anywhere near them because they crash into people um, they sometimes ride uh, with two people instead of one uh, people on them if they do get injured are going to suffer worse injuries than on any other form of uh, transport including motorcycles unbelievable got some great texts and tweets to read out to you which i'll get to also uh, some very good calls to do as well 0344 499 1000